Alright guys, swiggity swooty, let's see that booty. And by booty, of course, I mean uh, the deck that I'm playing. It is called, uh, and if you had read the, uh, the title of my last video, or this video even, Just Flaying. And you might remember that um, Headcase, my old pal Headcase, his, uh, I, I, I got his link uh, probably somewhere. Uh, he did this deck a long time ago. It is, whoops, a red, uh, white Boros deck. Very, 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 very lightly, uh, edited. And I, I, I saw him do it, and he's only done it, like, once, maybe a couple of times, and I thought it was just beautiful. I thought it was, it was fucking hilarious, and I needed, I needed to do it, too. It was just perfect. Look at this, look at this curve, man. Holy, isn't that perfect? Just a perfect, perfect curve, just slowly tapering out so you know uh, you know when this deck is uh, is supposed to be uh, shining uh, early mid game maybe maybe oh sorry about that I still got uh, boogers anyway um, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna how, what order should I do this in do you think I should go from just left to right should I do uh, uh, by converted mana cost only or should I just go to the heart of the deck and show you exactly what's going on right here uh, port and a betrayal and act of treason Definitely, we're running all four copies of each of them. That means we have eight sources of stealing our opponent's shit. And guess what else we got? We also have eight sources of doing something weird with our opponent's shit. Now, normally, we'll have a fling. All right, fling is good. Uh, I did run Blasting Station in this, but it was a three drop, and it kind of throws off my curve, and I didn't really care for it, so I got rid of it. How about that? Um, instead, I have... Um, Eight sources of steel, eight sources of doing something with that steel. Uh, fling, I mean, there's not really... You know what fling does. I mean, it's pretty easy. But uh, something important to remember, as an additional cost to cast fling, sacrifice a creature. So the sacrifice cost, uh, the sacrifice effect is part of the cost. That means that counter, that kill, can't be countered. Or that, uh, that, that sacrifice effect cannot be countered because it's part of the cost of this card. So no matter what that card is dying, and that's really important to remember. Uh, most of the time, though, if, if your opponent does have a counter, this is probably what's going to get countered, not the, not the actual flank. But it's still, you know, in, in some situations, this could still be relevant, so it's good to keep that in mind. Um, once you grab that opponent's creature, you've got another option here, Cloud Shift, and this one is way more interesting uh, and far more infuriating if you're the opponent, which is just so fun. Oh, my God. We've got, um, so if you look at the wording over here, uh, grab the, um, creature until end of turn. Same over here. Until end of turn. We got it. So that means at the end of your turn, the creature that you stole with this card gets returned. But, Cloud Shift takes it out of, you, out of the entire game and puts it back. So it's essentially a new creature. That means the effect of Active Trees and Important of Betrayal are no longer relevant to that creature. It's a new creature, essentially. And now it's just in the battlefield under your control. So that means you keep the goddamn creature. Isn't that great? Oh my god, it's fun. Um, imagine doing that with uh, a Pelica Worm, or a, um, a Runescarred Demon, or even Shadowborn Demon. Like, there's a bunch of bombs. Like, almost every damn bomb in the game. Uh, and, and it's yours. You got it. It's permanently yours uh, until they like bounce it or, or oh actually it's not entirely permanent yours. Say it has undying. Uh, if it dies, it doesn't come back to you. It comes back to its original controller. So there are some stipulations that you have to worry about, but for the most part, uh, it is yours. And this is really infuriating. You do this to a bomb, and most of the time, like a, a Kozilek or something, your opponent's bouncing. Like they're pissed. Um, probably one of the more uh, more entertaining parts of this game. So, how do you get there? That's that's really what the rest of this deck is, is sort of built around. Um, one second. Yeah, I'm, I'm still mutant to uh, inhale boogers. Um, let's let's check. The, all right, let's take a look at uh, maybe the one drops now. Uh, I'll do this uh, sort of a la Hakim style. So I showed you the heart of the deck. So obviously that can't be the only thing this deck does. Um, this deck has to still be you know a deck and rely on your own creatures. 
Uh, naturally, we have Goblin Arsonist and Shock and the one one drops. I mean, I think these are pretty standard one drop things. Uh, you, you, I mean, these don't really sink too much, but um, they're great creatures to. Uh, well, excuse me. The Goblin Arsonist is a great creature to slow down. I mean, it usually stops most two twos in their tracks, uh, unless it has first strike, of course, um, like uh, Brienne, and. I, I mean, I wouldn't go swinging... I mean, really, you would treat this Goblin Arsonist as any other Goblin Arsonist. It's not really that that good. It does sync with um, uh, Mentor and the Meek, which is really important for this deck because this is your main card draw engine, and you do want to like go through cards as much as possible. Uh, most of the chump creatures, mostly... I mean, al almost almost every creature syncs with Mentor of the Meek. That's why uh, that's why Rabble Master is in here. That's why Bramaz is in here. Well, Bramaz is in here just because it's white, and you should always have Bramaz. Uh, Raise the Alarm is in here for that, too. I mean, I know you have a lot of cards centered around Mentor of the Meek, but the the, the main purpose here of all these other cards is really to get uh, get your creature steals and, and... I mean, get your combo cards, really. I mean, it's not, it's not like rocket science, guys. This is pretty simple. Wall of Omens is a great uh, two-drop uh, wall that also gets you a card. This helps cycle. This helps stabilize you while your opponent is dropping uh, e and anything up to a three three, even even sometimes five fives, and you'll be okay for the most part because you've got the uh, because you can get a wall. And I don't mean just the wall of omens. I mean a wall as in like the wall of omens, a few chump blockers, maybe even a Bermaz. Uh, th th this guy might be standing out to you, Bane Slayer Angel. Um, this is this is just a one drop, honestly, and it's. It has saved my ass more times than than I really believe I would like to say. I mean, the protection is usually useless, but the, the biggest parts are the Flying First Strike and Lifelink to a lesser extent. Definitely Flying First Strike 5-5, five, five, super good. For a 5-drop for... A 5-5, five, 5-drop five, five for with, with all these little extra things attached to it. Kind of a ridiculous card, but pretty good. Pretty good to have, so there's really no reason not to have it. Same with the Bramaz, same with the two Rabble Masters. So, I mean, that really is the whole deck. I mean, the shock is in here just for a little extra board control. You can take them to the face if you ha if you have just a little bit left left to uh, push in there. But for the most part, you're sort of waiting for your opponent to drop their bomb, and then you beat them in the face with their bomb. <laughs> I mean, it's really simple. Uh, uh, up until that point, you're mostly just dropping legendaries, you know? You're dropping gold cards, um... A bunch of little chumps, uh, all sorts of shit. I mean, there's a lot of things you can change here. You could add a blasting station, for instance. You could add, um, you could add Inferno Titan. You could, I, I would not add uh, Anger of the Gods, but you could do Krenko's Command. Um, mo most of the things that I would add are probably actually in the white. Um, not not the Life Linker, Jesus. Uh, something more like. Uh, reprisal would be pretty decent removal, actually. In fact, that could be uh, an add here. But uh, I, I took it out because I figured that if there's anything with more than four, I'm just going to take it. You know, who cares? So why, why would you have reprisal? Um, another option, Squadron Hawk is pretty good, but it, it's sort of a different direction to take this deck. Uh, it's really good because it thins out your deck with four extra cards, and it, and it gets in the air, like, all the time. And the opponent has to deal with now four flyers, which is kind of a pain. Um, Brienne is really a great card to have. Definitely have her. Uh, Brienne and Podrick, of course. Um, I, I, I cut her out because she's a 3-drop, and I really want to preserve this curve. I think this curve is absolutely excellent. Uh, Banisher Priest is just a little more removal, which I don't think you need to worry about removal with this deck. Um, I mean, really, I'm, I'm not going to go through all the possibilities of what you can do here. Just, d just don't run this one. <clears throat> but, um... I, I can definitely have some uh, help with uh, the mana here. The mana curve. Uh, if you look at this, uh, the, what the distribution here, I have uh, almost, not not quite, but almost double uh, red cards than I do with white. So here I have almost double uh, red mana sources as I do with white. Uh, you don't need to do this little trick with the tri lands because obviously I don't run blue and I definitely don't run black. But I'm I put these in here essentially as the regular guild gate, but uh, they're sort of enhanced because there's no there's no reason to run a guild gate when you can run a tri land because th the drawback is exactly the same. They're completely identical, so you might as well uh, throw in these extra colors just to throw your opponent off. Like, uh, in some percentage of the games, 
I'm going to put this down, I'm going to have a, a, a blue showing, and the opponent might make a misplay because he's expecting me to have some kind of counter magic open. That's that's the whole that's the whole strategy behind that. I know some players like Hakeem uh, have OCD and they don't like doing that, but I Hakeem uh, Mobius Chicken Strips definitely does that, and he sees the value in uh, in, in screwing with your opponents. Um, so yeah, the best interaction. I, I mean, I've already told it to you. Uh, active treason with uh, Cloud Shift to steal an opponent, uh, an opponent's creature, and everything else is pretty much just um, a bomb, a token shitter, or some kind of some kind of decent blocker to get you to the mid to late game. Uh, so so th this is essentially just stabilizing you up in there. Um, so it, really, that's it. That's really it. Uh, it's a it's a great deck uh, because not a lot of people know about this interaction. It's a ridiculous interaction. It's very fun to do. Uh, watching your opponents bounce is is pretty pretty enjoyable, honestly. All right, so that's about it. I'm going to get in with a few games of this guy. Uh, this is probably going to be my last deck up until uh, 2016 drops. It's not actually called 2016, but I'll call it that. Whatever. <sighs> and about, you know... No, I'll talk about that in the next video. I, I, I was going to talk about my saltiness. Um, Alright, let, let's get into that, alright? See you guys later.